Top of the morning to you today, YouTubers. Today is St. Patty's Day, and I just want to give you a little bit of a happy holiday to you because I am Irish myself, at least in descent, and I'm sure a lot of people are having a lot of fun this day, being a bunch of hooligans, so slanch at all of you. Now, I'm going to do a video today about everyone's favorite character. I know it's your favorite character. It's one of mine, Sansa Stark, and why going into season eight, you should actually be rooting for Sansa Stark instead of complaining that she's done nothing to get to where she is and she is one of the worst characters in addition to her mother, Catelyn Tully. Sansa's not really one of my favorite characters. I think she's actually kind of okay, and that's about it. But there's a lot of reasons why you should really support her going into the season. I wasn't lying about that part of it. There's plenty that actually distinguishes her from other people that I think we should really try to do. So really give me a little bit of time throughout this video so you can hear my argument and determine and by the end if you think actually it's worth the time of day to pay attention to Sansa as opposed to a few other characters. I'll give you five kind of overarching reasons and I'll explain them as I go. But number one, I'm going to start off by saying that she's actually become a good leader at this point. In season seven, we saw what she could do by controlling Winterfell when Jon had left. Sure, some of her decision making before Jon had left, you know, the whole fighting with him about who gets what castle and everything like that, that was a little bit questionable because Jon seemed to have done the right thing in the end. But there was sound logic to what she was bringing up when she was in control of Winterfell. People liked her very much. She was slipping into the Lady of Winterfell role really well. She's figured out how to rule. She knows the game. She knows everything. So Sansa has actually come from that stupid, naive little girl all the way to a pretty good leader, similar-esque to a uh, Lyanna Mormont. Of course, she's probably not as uh, cold, as battle-hardened, I guess you could say, but she's pretty up there. Number two reason, I mean, Sansa Stark has earned her stripe. She has gotten to the end of Game of Thrones, and she has been through a hell of a lot. Because I think people don't have appreciation for the journey that Sansa has been on. Sansa Stark started off the series, of course, she was this naive girl thinking about ponies and knights and her beloved Joffrey. And obviously that was all a facade. None of that stuff came true or was going to come true. She has come a long way since then. Ever since season one, she had been a prisoner in King's Landing. And that's a pretty big deal. I mean, you know, people give a lot of credit to like Arya Stark for finding her own way and becoming this big battle hardened person. But Arya has really been on her own this whole time. She spent some time with the Hound, she spent the Bravos, she did all these things. But she has never been at a point where she's really been a captive. Even when the Hound had her, she was barely a captive at that point. Sansa was having Joffrey point crossbows at her while they were hanging around in King's Landing. Sure, she was safe and she was comfortable, but she was a prisoner. She was trapped. Couldn't do anything. And that was the case for an extremely long time. And then eventually when she got free, thanks to Peter Baelish, she was then traded off to the Boltons and became a prisoner in another way. So Sansa has had a really tough time. Sure, decisions she made led to captivity to a degree, she could not have known that and or there probably wasn't a better decision at the time that you or I would have made. So I'm not about to crucify her for something that I think is actually pretty logical. She just had a rough go of it and people used her name against her. Whereas all these other people, not the case. Give a little appreciation for Sansa Stark. She had been beaten, she had been raped, she had been threatened, she had been used constantly as a piece. She had been married to someone she didn't want to because she had to in order for Tywin Lannister to make sure that Winterfell was all tied up in a nice little bow. So let's give appreciation for the fact that Sansa was put through hell, barely said anything. I mean, she played the game perfectly of being a POW, essentially. Tell me the truth. Do you want an end to this engagement? I am the world King Joffrey, my one true love. And I think she deserves a little more credit for that. Number three, this kind of ties into one and two, but she has learned from the best people in the entire series. And some of the worst. When I say the best, she spent a lot of time in King's Landing, so she was around a lot of influential people. People such as Cersei Lannister, Tywin Lannister, Tyrion Lannister, Marjorie Tyrell, Olenna Tyrell, Peter Baelish, Lord Varys, Mr. Pycelle, all of these people that have had an impact on the series in a huge way. She's been around them all. Well, actually, Joffrey, let's toss him in real quick, too. She's been around them. She knows what are political pitfalls, and she knows what are political positives. Luckily, she learned a lot of good from people like a Marjorie, a Baelish, a Lena, and a Varys, but she learned a lot of the terrible things from a Cersei Lannister and a Joffrey. She knows one extreme to the other, and that is something that's going to be ultimately helpful if she's trying to be a leader in the future. And right now, she seems to be putting that to good use. The two main influences, clearly, are Peter Baelish and Cersei Lannister. Cersei taught her some things that help her figure out, as a woman, how to navigate the political landscape. Margie Tyrell is the epitome of how to do this. 
but Cersei Lannister plays her part as well. She is a survivor to this point, even though I think she's a giant idiot and very fortunate. Still, she got here, so it'd be smart for Sansa to learn from her. And also, of course, Peter Baelish has been really helpful because he knew exactly what moves to make and when, think about the opponent's motivations, and how to turn them around for your own gain. And that's what Sansa did ultimately when she killed Peter Baelish. Well, Arya killed Peter Baelish, but it was basically through Sansa's plan. So, you have to give Sansa a lot of credit, is that she has a lot of wisdom up in her mind when a lot of people would typically categorize her as a stupid, silly girl. Number four, is that Sansa Stark is willing to do things that Starks typically are terrible at doing. And what I mean by this is, when you think of a lot of the greatest Starks, the Starks you probably like the most. What do you like the most about them? Typically they are honorable, they are all about sticking to their word, they don't really waver from the right thing. Sansa Stark at this point is very much willing to waver from the right thing. She set up Peter Baelish to his death. Which is something that I don't think any Stark would have done, other as they usually don't prefer the behind-the-back type stuff. They prefer a right-at-you kind of stabbing. And Sansa helps set that up. And of course, a big thing that the Starks would never do is self-sacrifice. Now you could argue the morality of this and the ethical ability of it. An example of what I'm talking about is, at the Battle of the Bastards, Rickon Stark, of course, was killed. Now before, when they were strategic planning, you had Jon Snow, you had Davos, you had Tormund, they were all planning the battle plans with a few men, then after they left, Sansa's like, listen, it's not enough, why didn't you ask me what my opinion was on this thing? I was with Ramsay for a long time, Jon says, well, what's the difference? She says, we don't have enough men, he said, I know, but we still gotta go and save Rickon. Sansa tried to talk to him and say, listen, we're never getting Rickon back, and I need you to know that. And John is unwilling to listen to that, which I don't blame him because that's his little half-brother. Sansa Stark was the realist in the situation. She said, there's no way Rickon will come back. And then the next part of that conversation is, just don't do what Ramsay expects you to do. She said, I don't know anything about battle, but what I do know is Ramsay plays with people. And whatever you think you're going to do to him, he's going to do back to you way worse. And that's exactly what happened, okay? Ramsay, the next day, he sends Rickon running towards John. What does John do? John goes by himself out to go get Rickon Stark. And when that happened, Rickon died anyway, of course, because Ramsay knew he was going to die. I mean, he was a giant threat, the biggest threat to Ramsay's claim to Winterfell. He had to die no matter what. John, however, still played into his hands. He ran out there to go get him, and as a result, the Stark army was unready for what they had to go do, which was basically go back up Jon Snow after he tried to get Rickon and arrows were coming at him. So Jon ruined that strategy and Sansa knew it would happen. As a result of Jon not listening to Sansa the night where they were planning, she had to go back to Baelish, she had to go crawling to Baelish and say, listen, get the Vale army, we're gonna go fight because my idiot half-brother is not listening to me when I say, don't plan how you normally would plan. Again, I don't know how much I blame John on this, but you can't look back in hindsight and say that Sansa wasn't trying to tell him. Whatever your normal plan is, what you just planned out right now, this is probably Battle Tactics 101, okay? You're probably not doing anything brilliant. Ramsay is going to notice that and do something else on top of it. So John played right into it, he strayed from his own battle plan, and Ramsay got him. And Sansa was 100% right. She went out and got the veil, she won the Battle of the Bastards for the Starks, whether people want to believe that or not. And that's really all it is. She ended up doing a really awesome thing because she is able to separate her emotions from reality. The reality was Rickon Stark was never going to be saved and Jon didn't believe that. Sansa was the true MVP in that situation. That leads me to number five reason why Sansa Stark really should be rooted for at this point. All the remaining Starks left in the television show, she is the only one that does not have some kind of magical, fantastical abilities that have been used to elevate her character. And what I mean by this is, you have the obvious ones, let's lay them out. You have Jon Snow, you have Arya Stark, you have Bran Stark, and you have Sansa Stark. The four Starks remaining at this point. Jon Snow, of course, we know what happened to him. He was killed by his fellows at the Night's Watch, and he was brought back by the Lord of Light. That's how Jon is here today. Bran Stark, Bran had to go up north of the Wall. He has been touched by this Three-Eyed Raven ability. Otherwise, maybe he would have been killed. If he wasn't warging, maybe he would have been killed right then and there throughout the entire series when he was climbing all the way up to the wall to get to the Three-Eyed Raven. I don't know. And of course, lastly, you have Arya Stark, went to the Faceless Men. She had to learn how to do all this stuff with the God of Death and doing all spooky things. And that has really helped her get to where she is right now. Sansa Stark is still untouched by magic at this point. And I think that's really impressive, actually, because there are very few characters that have not been touched by this so far. Even Daenerys Targaryen, 
Targaryen has been, the Hound, Beric Dardarian, all these people actually have to some degree. This is one of the only characters I could think of that doesn't have a magical element tied to her at all. Like even Cersei has like prophecy attached to her to some degree, but Sansa is untouched. Sansa is the most relatable character to most of us. I think that's why Sansa is so looked down upon in this series. Because it's not fantastical. It's not someone that you really want to look up to. It's not someone that inspires you a lot. But it damn sure should be. We all know Sansa in our lives. We all don't know a Tyrion. That's what makes Tyrion so great and so interesting. But Sansa Stark is the person next door. And I think we need to gain appreciation for that in the story because you need characters like that in a very fantastical series. So let's take a second and appreciate the fact that a normal person who had gone from the journey of being a useless, kind of silly girl, go all the way up to this strong, confident woman who's been through a ton of crap with some of the biggest characters in the series. She is up here now, and she has yet to have any kind of magical elevation. Let's take a second, appreciate, and not hate Sansa Stark. What's gonna do for my video? What did you think? Did you think my argument was stupid? Do you now change your mind a little bit and go like, you know what, that guy's making a little bit of sense. I don't know. Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to talk to you more about this whole Sansa Stark thing. And of course, we have the Game of Thrones season coming up very soon. I'm excited to do a lot of different stuff that, for this channel. I am on a drive to hit 100,000 subscribers, and I will need all of you to help me out. Over the next two months, we need to get to 100,000 subscribers. So that's like 68,000 subscribers. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna be really excited to do it. Tell your friends, tell your uncles, get your dogs to sign up for YouTube. I am all about that, and just smash the subscribe button if you wanna see more of my stuff in the future and really get me motivated to make even more stuff. But that's gonna do it. Hope you have an amazing day, everybody. Take care. Goodbye.